Hello and welcome to the Final Fantasy XIV and Walker Machinist Guide. My name is Julia and I will be covering the ins and outs of the machinist job at level 90. Machinist, alongside Bard and Dancer, is one of the three physical race jobs. Out of these three, Machinist is considered the selfish DPS. Whereas both Bard and Dancer's playstyles revolve around buffing your party members through dances and songs, Machinist on the other hand has no buffs and focuses solely on providing high burst damage to make the most use out of your party members' buffs. Whilst Machinist is a selfish DPS, and therefore does not bring a lot of utility, it does bring one of the better raid-wide damage mitigations. Tactician is a 90 second cooldown which applies a 15 second buff reducing all damage taken by 10%. Since you do not have to target any enemy to apply the mitigation, and since the duration is considerably longer than Addle and Faint, this makes Tactician one of the stronger damage mitigations a DPS can bring. It is worth to note that both Bard and Dancer have their own versions of Tactician. They are named Troubadour and Shield Samba. These two abilities are functionally the same as Tactician. This means that Machinists do not have an edge over these two jobs in terms of utility. These three abilities also do not stack, instead they override each other. Keep this in mind when playing in a party with another physical range. Alongside Tactician, we also have the standard Disciples of War job actions. These include Leg Race, a 40% slow that lasts for 10 seconds. Second Wind, a potent self-heal with a long cooldown. Use this when caught in a dire situation or when your healers need extra help. Foot Race, a 10 second long root that disappears when the target takes damage. Peloton, a raid wide buff that increases everyone's movement speed. This buff does not work in combat. Use it during the pre-pull to help your melees get to the boss faster or in between pulls in dungeons. Head Grace, an interrupt on a short cooldown. And finally, Arm's Length. This is your knockback immunity. The machine's job gauges consist of two bars, a red one for heat and a blue one for battery. It is important not to overcap these gauges by using your heat and battery generating abilities whilst these gauges are full. Since Machinist has a static rotation, this is less of a concern than you might initially think. Heat is generated by using your main combo abilities, scatter gun and barrel stabilizer. Heat is spent on Hypercharge, which overheats your Ether pack, buffing your single target GCD abilities by 20 potency and allowing the usage of the Heat Blast ability. Battery is generated by your final combo ability clean shot, Air Anchor and Chainsaw. It is spent on summoning the Automaton Queen, a mean robot with an attitude that does a considerable amount of burst damage. The rotation is fairly straightforward. You keep all of your cooldowns on cooldown, and when they're all used and have nothing else to do, we have a 3 part combo that generates heat and battery gauge. This 3 part combo starts with heated split shot, goes into heated slug shot and ends with heated clean shot. Make sure to keep your GCD rolling by using your combo to fill out your rotation. You want to keep your tool abilities, drill, air anchor and chainsaw, always on cooldown. These three abilities hit very hard, and letting them sit idle for an extended time could result in a misusage over the course of the fight, and might drift them outside of your party's raid buffs. Two more important abilities to not let sit idle are Gauss Round and Ricochet. These two OGCD abilities have a short cooldown and can stack up three times. Simply use these as you get them to keep the stacks low and not to overcap. 
Alongside these tools, you have five more major cooldowns to keep track of. The first being Barrel Stabilizer. This OGCD grants you 50 heat and allows you to instantly go into your burst phase. Use this as soon shown in the opener and keep it on cooldown as long as you do not overcap your heat gauge. The second major cooldown is Wildfire. This OGCD applies a debuff to a target which explodes after 10 seconds. The damage of this explosion scales with the amount of GCD abilities you hit the target with during its duration. This means it's important to get the full amount of GCD abilities into the debuff before it expires. The correct way to do this leads us onto the third major cooldown. This cooldown is Hypercharge. Spending 50 heat gauge, this ability puts you into overheat, increasing your single target damage and enabling the heat blast ability. During the usage of Hypercharge, you should be using heat blast 5 times. Each usage will decrease the cooldown of both Gauss Round and Ricochet by 15 seconds. This means that in between your heat blast, you will be required to weave in one of the two OGCDs to prevent overcapping them. Do keep in mind that Heath Blast has a 1.5 second GCD, so it's only possible to weave in one of the two per cost. Here is an example of Wildfire and Hypercharge being used correctly. Next up, we have the ability Reassemble. This neat OGCD makes your next GCD ability a guaranteed critical strike. Use these on either Drill, Air Anchor or Chainsaw. It's also important to try to use one of them during the 2 minute burst windows. Lastly, we have the Automaton Queen. Spending your battery gauge, you summon a robot that dashes in and auto-attacks the target for a set duration, leading into two finishing moves that deal a considerable amount of damage. The duration of Queen is increased by the amount of battery she is summoned at. It is important to note that her damage goes linearly with battery usage. That said, it is important to summon higher battery queens that use their finishing moves in the rate buffs of your party members as this allows you to dump more potency into said rate buffs. Please refer to this table where you can see how long the queen will be active at different battery usage. As you can see, the actual time is different from the time displayed on your job gauge. This is because the two finisher moves are used after the time on your job gauge expires. It is also important to note that the actual uptime of queens summoned at 80, 90 and 100 battery gauge is bigger than the average rate buff. The queen also takes roughly 5 seconds to prepare its first attack after you summon the robot. This is why you want to use the queen 2 GCDs or 5 seconds before the rate buffs go out. You can keep track of other players rate buffs by looking at the cooldown of wildfire or barrel stabilizer. The rotation of the machinist job is static. This means that every pull the rotation is the exact same. There are no procs or RNG that change anything in your rotation. This makes it both very easy and difficult at the same time depending on what you are good at. Since the rotation is static, you can learn the exact order of abilities and simply press that to perform perfectly every single pull. This also means that there is no room for error and letting your cooldown sit unused or spending your gauges at the wrong time can have serious impact on how much damage you do. There are four things we need to talk about to play our rotation perfectly. The first thing is our opener. We start off by reassembling 5 seconds before the pull. This is so your reassemble cooldown is rolling as soon as possible. The reassemble buff is 5 seconds long, so your first used ability will still benefit from it. This ability will be Air Anchor, then straight into Drill. Make sure to use one Gauss Round and one Ricochet in between the two tool abilities. After Drill, we use Barrel Stabilizer and we instantly go into our combo. We use our full combo and weave in one more Gauss Round and one more Ricochet. Try to weave these after your Heated Slug Shot so it catches more rate buffs. After your Clean Shot, we reassemble into Wildfire before using Chainsaw. We now have our Wildfire ticking enough heat to hypercharge and enough battery to use an automaton queen. 
We instantly summon Queen and go into Hypercharge, Heat Blasting 5 times, weaving Ricochet or Gauss Round in between each Heat Blast before finally finishing off the opener with a Drill. Here is an example of how to do the opener perfectly. The opener and the 2 minute burst sequences are arguably the most difficult parts of the job. My recommendation is to master the opener on a dummy before continuing into further parts of the rotation. The machinist opener is also very flexible, and the free combo GCDs, Trill, Chainsaw, Air Anchor and your Wildfire plus Hypercharge burst can be moved freely around. This is usually only done if you know the specific kill time of the boss you're about to fight and then only if it means that you gain an extra usage of any of these abilities. If you do not know these things for certain, then stick to the standard opener which I just described. After your opener, you will burst every minute. The odd minutes are smaller bursts with the even minutes being bigger bursts. In between these bursts, you simply keep your combo rolling and keep your tool abilities, drill, an air anchor and your OGCD gauss round and ricochets on cooldown. It's also important to ensure that you do not overcap your heat gauge, so hypercharge at least once between every burst opportunity. Before going into hypercharge, ensure that your tool abilities are on cooldown and won't come off cooldown for another 7 seconds and that your gauss round and ricochets both have less than 1 charge stored up. On our even minute burst we do something similar but a little bigger. We summon Queen 5 seconds prior again so that I can charge up and will instantly start attacking when the first raid buffs go out. This is for example at 1 minute 55, 3 minutes 55 or 5 minutes 55. We open with an air anchor into a drill. We use hypercharge instantly after the drill and start heat blasting. It's important to have used up all your gauss round and ricochet charges, else you will overcap here. After the first heat blast, Barrel Stabilizer will come off cooldown and we instantly use it before continuing with the rest of the heat blast. We fin Ricochet and Gauss rounds except for the last heat blast. We use Reassemble here and instantly use it on Chainsaw. After the Chainsaw, we use Wildfire and Hypercharge for another 5 heat blasts with Ricochet and Gauss rounds weaves in. We end on Drill when it comes off cooldown exactly after the last heat blast. Here you can see an example of the even minute bursts. It's important to note that these bursts do not work this way unless you keep everything on cooldown in between bursts. If you let your cooldown sit idle or use a different order of abilities in your opener, you will have to adjust on the fly and attempt your best to not overcap any resources or let any cooldown sit idle. Lastly, I'll talk a little bit more in depth on your Ottoman Queen usage. As previously mentioned, you use Queen instantly at 50 battery gauge in your opener. After this, you instantly use her again when you reach 50 battery gauge for the second time. This makes it so your first 2 minute burst, you end up with 100 battery gauge exactly. After these first 3 queen summons, you can start using the 55 second rule, where you summon queen 5 seconds prior to the minute mark, regardless of what battery you're at. During AoE encounters, like dungeons, we adjust our rotation. Starting on two targets, 
we start using reassemble on chainsaw with any second reassembles on air anchor. Start using bioblaster instead of drill and still use your heat blast during hypercharge and do your single target combo as filler. On free targets and more, you can start using auto crossbow instead of heat blast and filler with flamethrower and scattergun. Starting at 7 targets or more, stop using air anchor altogether. Machinists don't love skill speed, but it's not our ultimate demise either, as is the case with many other jobs. However, we do desire exactly 2.5 second recast time to make our static rotation happen. You will notice that with anything other than 2.5 recast time, your rotation starts to do weird things like clip TCDs and drift cooldowns. Our stat priority is as follows. Weapon damage over dexterity, crit over determination and direct hit over, finally, skill speed. When gearing, almost always go for the higher item level items, despite their substats. This is because both weapon damage and dexterity heavily outvalue the other substats. Do this whilst trying to maintain 2.5 second recast time. This guide is made with no particular tier in mind, so for your current best in slot list, please visit the balance discord or icveins.com. Lastly, I want to talk about a few smaller notes that I don't believe fit in any of the previous categories. Paul Bunker instantly lets your queen do her finisher. Only use this if the target is about to become untargetable or if they are about to die. In any other scenario, just let queen do her thing. She will automatically use both Paul Bunker and Crown Collider. If you have high ping, you might have issues double weaving or weaving in between heat blasts. This makes the job perform significantly worse. However, there are ways to deal with this. For PC users, you can use No Clippy or XIV Alexander to increase the spell queue window. For both PC users and console users, you can use a VPN to get a better route to the server, possibly reducing ping that way. For more information, check the balance discord. XIV analysis is a useful tool to help you analyze your rotation. Simply put in your FFlogs report to see what you can improve upon. I recommend using this frequently whilst learning the job. Finally, I want to thank the theory crafters of the balance for helping me make this guide. Without them, this would not have been possible.